welcome a brilliantly funny comedian. It's Dermot Corr. Just give me two seconds here just to move this amplification stick holder thingy majiggy out of the road. There we go. Clean deadly. <laughs> Clean deadly. Right, um, you can probably tell by my accent that I'm not actually from Belfast. You at the back, you'll be able to tell that I'm actually from the country by my general sort of wind-beaten head. Um, <laughs> where these lovely people at the front, they'll be able to tell that I'm from a farm in the country with a very strong smell of dung. <laughs> I best introduce myself. My name is Jermud Corr. Uh, Jermud is an Irish name. Uh, in England, uh, they would call me Dermot. And in Belfast, they call me, what is it again? Oh yeah, yeah, Colche. <laughs> I love doing stand-up, I really love doing it. And the reason for that is because that I can talk about anything, I can really say about anything. Uh, and like, I can talk about anybody. Roy Orbison. Anybody who sings about driving all night long whenever they're blind clearly needs talking. <laughs> Roy, give me back those keys. <laughs> but it's not directly true, he wasn't actually blind. But, and this is a very big but, he had a list of problems with his eyes as long as my arm. He had glaucoma in both eyes. He was long-sighted in one eye, short-sighted in the other, which apparently doesn't cancel each other out. <laughs> he also had clouded vision, and he also had tunnel vision, which is kind of like sitting in a dark room looking at the whole world through a keyhole <laughs> from about a metre away. And to top it all off, the poor bugger was cross-eyed. <laughs> the fact that he found the car in the first place was a bit of an achievement. He probably did drive all night. He only lived down, she only lived 20 metres down the road. <laughs> I, um, I come from a small farm uh, surrounded by bog land on the edge of civilization forward slash Tyrone. <laughs> in a place called Killymuck. Some of you had heard of it, yes. Well, that's surprising. Um, it, well, I suppose not really, because there's lots of places in Tyrone that, be, that, that sort of like have the word kill in it, which must have been a nightmare during the Troubles. <laughs> Especially if you get stopped by the army. Excuse me, sir. Where are you coming from? Killing a man. <laughs> <laughs> and where are you going to? Kill more? Now, Killymuck was a very rural place. and in, in fact, it was so rural that I used to get made fun of by the Colchies. <laughs> there they'd be standing in the corner of a uh, field. <laughs> talking about winning the lottery or something. Jesus, you know, boy, I wouldn't buy a Ferrari if I won the lottery. Why is that John Joe Pot makes famous all about it? <laughs> well, I tell you why, Tom. It's for you can't get a bit of hay under the back of a Ferrari, you see. <laughs> And then I came along and they had a nickname for me. They called me Bog Boy because I came from a bog land, a small farm surrounded by bog land. They called me Bog Boy. And I really resented this because these are the two biggest idiots around, you know? Oh, no, well, saying that Tom wasn't a bad old skin, John Joe Pat McShamus Aloysius, on the other hand, was a dick. <laughs> but I did feel sorry for him in a way because he came from a family of 23 brothers and sisters. So they didn't really have much, including food. So I'm pretty sure that his mum was feeding him gravel along with his spuds, because he was the most backed up person I'd ever met. He was constantly constipated and he was proud of the fact. He used to brag about it, like in school. Excuse me, excuse me, miss, 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 excuse me. Miss, excuse me, see me, see me. Did you know that a man who suffers from severe constipation suffers nearly the same pain as that of a woman giving birth? Which is clearly nonsense, because if a man went through nearly the same amount of pain as a woman giving birth as he did having a dump, He'd keep it. <laughs> he'd give it a name and he'd send it to school. You'd see all these men down in the pub cradling little turds. Pint in one hand, tin of fly spray in the back pocket. What a lovely wee skit you have there, boy. <laughs> Which way much? I should a bit of pound. A heavy wee lump. Heavy wee lump, I think. <laughs> um, but I moved away from there and I moved to Belfast. And I found life a bit strange whenever I moved to Belfast. See, stuff will happen in the city that just won't happen in the country. Like, you'll never get mugged in the country. Give me all your money. Give me all your money now. <laughs> now, come on, Uncle Pat. I know that's you. <laughs> just because you're wearing a different tweed hat. <laughs> Bit of advice. If you ever try this again, it's tights the word in your head. Can't actually see through long jaunt. 
Now, the reason why I say this is because within a week of me actually moving to Belfast, some wee spady fella tried to mug me. Now, whenever I say he attempted to mug me, I told him that anything that he got from me would be deducted from his incapacity benefit because I worked for the Social Security. <laughs> now, and I went back and I told my flatmate this, and he says, you don't seem phased. I says, I'm not. He says, why not? I says, well, he was from Belfast. He says, what do you mean? He says, well, a lot of men from Belfast, now, not all of them, but a lot of them, try to put across this idea that they're as hard as nails. And it's kind of hard to imagine them that way because most of them are four foot six and built like toothpicks. <laughs> and they've got really high pitched voices, which isn't scary at all. In fact, the angrier they get, the higher it goes until it becomes completely inaudible. And just to really piss off all those country people, they confirm everything that they've just said at the end of their sentence. So they do, so it is, so on. <laughs> Give me your phone, your wallet. <laughs> shoo, shoo. Are you shoo me? Are you shoo me? Hey, do you so if so, I'm so well. Put him a roll before it's on your head, you throw. <laughs> but Belfast women are completely opposite. They've got really deep voices. All right, Sean Dave. <laughs> Give me three and a half thousand packets of cigarettes there, please. <laughs> a Pocahontas McGinty, it's yourself. <laughs> Them's beautiful pyjamas you're wearing. <laughs> Lovely slippers, are they new? <laughs> All right, these are my good going down to the shop slippers. <laughs> Anyway, my name is Pete Jeremy Corn. You've been great. Thanks very much. Funny, funny man. Very, very funny. We saw him in the rehearsal. He's still funny. That is Mr. Jeremy Corn.